A few weeks ago, I promised I'd unpack each of the four inclusive leadership behaviours, connecting, coaching, collaborating, and challenging. Well, as this is International Women's Day and it's themed Choose to Challenge, it seemed like an appropriate time to explore the critical leadership skill of challenging. So here we go. It's by far not just Greta Thunberg or Black Lives Matter and Me Too supporters who feel the need to challenge the status quo right now. We're at an inflection point in our society, globally and here in Australia, and if there were ever a time to challenge for the betterment of people, planet and profit, I think it would be now. But as we've seen for Greta in making the choice to challenge, she has experienced both ladders and snakes. In some contexts, she has been launched up the ladder as a gutsy guest speaker who creates an appetite for action, whilst in others, she has slid down the slippery snake and had to withstand intense public scrutiny and personal ridicule. So some of us are more attuned to reading the dynamics of situations than others, and that means that sometimes we can be taken by surprise when what appeared to us as an enticing ladder laden with rewards actually turns out to be a slippery snake, which abruptly casts the well-intentioned challenger into the icy landscape of exclusion. We all know what it feels like from time to time. Occasionally though, someone will feel the fear and choose to challenge, playing the odds essentially of risk and reward. But what's most common, however, is to feel the fear and make the safe choice. Now time will tell if my choice to speak out this International Women's Day will become either a ladder or a snake, potentially losing, as my daughter suggested, every potential male client. We'll see. However, the crescendo of voices about sexual harassment in our workplaces, our parliament, our schools, and in our homes, actually in our society, has risen to the point where it truly is time to challenge. So is there a right way to challenge that increases your chances of ascending the ladder and avoiding the slippery snake? Well, I believe there are some things that you can do, yes, to minimise the snakes in your life. However, I also believe it is wise to turn on your emotional intelligence, do some savvy stakeholder analysis and understand the power dynamics of the situation. Now, if you're a leader wanting to reap the rewards of challenger level psychological safety, according to Dr. Timothy Clark, you need to be able to do things very, two things very effectively, increase intellectual friction and reduce social friction. Now, most leaders run a mile when they hear this statement, but it's really worth thinking about just for a moment, a little bit deeply. Teams which lead with positive intentions and engage in constructive debate tend to achieve just that. So my number one rule when you are challenging is to lead explicitly with the positive intention or the goal that you have. Set the scene, don't take people by surprise. Explain you don't mean harm, but you see an opportunity that you would like to share. Now, fortunately, not every choice we make to challenge requires quite so much consideration. However, leaders and teams do have choices, be they conscious or unconscious, about the degree of challenge that they wish to engage in. And it's the little but big reactions leaders have in response to a challenge that creates the standard accepted in any team. It's the tone, the words, the body language, all cumulatively create an environment which enables either more or less challenge to occur in a team. And as a leader, I've sometimes caught myself experiencing frustration or impatience with someone who's choosing to challenge at that moment, which doesn't really seem quite fair, actually, given that I'm somewhat of a disruptor myself. But what I've learned, of course, is before I condemn them for their audacity is to consciously look for the intention behind their comment and just to ask the question, why do you say that? It is actually quite likely they've got an insight which is not quite known to you um, and it's simply impossible, of course, for you to know it all or to see it all in today's world. Benefit of the doubt. So if your team can become comfortable with some well-intentioned and respectful dialogue, discussion and debate, you can reap the rewards and manage the risks associated with challenger level psychological safety. So challenger psychological safety is the ladder of all ladders. On the business side, it offers innovation and increased performance, and on the human side, authentic levels of well-being and belonging. Risks are mitigated by virtue of the early warning signals received in a team, and there is no doubt that challenger levels of psychological safety would have enabled Westpac to be more profitable, Rio Tinto more respected, and nursing homes safer and more profitable. 
Corporate leaders and politicians could have continued their successful careers and many, many women in Australia's Indigenous community could have been spared genuine trauma had a diverse range of voices been heard and respected before it was too late. So on this International Women's Day, I'm choosing to challenge respectfully and I also believe fairly but forthrightly because as both an HR practitioner and a survivor, I have lived experience which qualifies me to make this statement. It just cannot be the case anyone in our corporate or public service in Australia is unaware sexual harassment and corporate bullying is illegal and it inflicts serious harm on its victims. As the brave prefect from Cranbrook School recently demonstrated, it's just not the case. Many of our students are unaware of the impact of their behaviour. And while schools have come out and said they will educate earlier and more frequently, they are also pleading with parents, carers and the community to support them in changing the environment in which young women are being so frequently abused. It's critical that we Hashtag just stop it in schools because the evidence is clear. If we don't stop it there, the behaviour goes into the tertiary education sector, the workplace, and then repeats itself in the next generation at home. So will this challenge I'm choosing to make on International Women's Day be a ladder or a snake for me? Well, that's up to you to decide. But I believe our social, corporate, and personal futures depend on us learning the skills to make it safe to challenge well. And I urge us all to be brave and to say on this International Women's Day, time is up, just stop it and choose to challenge well. Wishing you a happy and thoughtful day. Thank you.